Good morning students. Once again welcome to physics class. In the previous lecture we have introduced the basic concept of capacitor and the measured value of capacitor is referred as capacitance. Now today we will continue with the same concept with few more fundas related with it. So as we have introduced the concept of capacitor as it is an arrangement of two conductors whatever be the conductor we are taking two conductors separated by certain distance apart and separated by certain medium in between the medium can be air or any other dielectric medium so the purpose of the combination of two conductors when these are placed parallel to each other is to store charge and energy so in simple terms what we refer it as it is an arrangement it is an arrangement of two conductors conductors separated by an insulating medium so it is an arrangement of two conductors separated by some insulating medium and the purpose of it is to store charge and energy so if we say that this plate is acquiring that it is acquiring plus q charge and we have introduced the concept that by induction the other plate will acquire negative charge so basically due to this charge it will have some potential and it will also have some potential so potential difference potential difference between the plates will be v1 minus v2 so it means charge on a capacitor is q don't confuse it that the total charge on capacitor is plus q minus q it is zero it will not mean that if we are saying charge on the capacitor it will be q only so as we have also introduced the si unit and we have introduced si unit is one farad rather farad so if we have to define capacitance to be 1 farad then how can you define it we have already defined it that it is also defined as if one coulomb of charge is transferred from one plate one conductor to another on application of potential difference of 1 volt what does it mean that if one coulomb of charge is transferred from one conductor to another on application of potential difference of 1 volt across the two conductors then only you can say capacitor to be capacitance to be 1 farad already on this formula we have introduced we have defined as a unit of capacitance so now if we have to represent it symbolically pictorial representation or symbolic representation like uh, you are familiar that whenever you have studied in class 10 that when you are using a cell cell is has having certain electrical symbol circuit symbol is there likewise capacitor is also have some symbol now how can you represent the capacitor two plates of the capacitor are represented by two parallel lines separated by certain distance between the two terminals so this is capacitance this is taken as fixed capacitance capacitor rather we are measuring its capacitance the component is capacitor and if we have to take its value to be variable then what we will represent it will be representing a variable resistor a variable capacitor uh, if you recall that in class 10th you have studied the concept of variable resistor that you were terming it as rheostat don't get confused with the two term capacitance is different term resistance is different term but i am just relating the concept of variable so it is this is a symbolic representation of variable capacitor so whenever you have to use in the circuit now after this we will use this symbol most of the time you will use this symbol this will be rarely used when the value of capacitor is shown to be variable now next 
point we are related with it that is parallel plate capacitor. What is this parallel plate capacitor? So if the two plates of the capacitor that it be one and this two. That it is having surface charge density plus sigma. It is having surface charge density minus sigma. And each of the plate having area A. A is area of each plate. And D. D is the separation distance. Separation or distance between the two plates. Sigma plus minus you can take. This is uniform charge densities on the plates. So as it is having positive charge density, so it will be uniformly distributed, distributed on the outer surface of this conductor. Each plate is a conductor itself and as we have studied capacitor its principle as the outer surface was grounded so here the charge here it is uh, represented by a negative sign on the inner edge so here its surface charge density is minus sigma again this will be uniformly distributed now here what we have to study that in in outer region that is on the left of plate 1 and on the right of plate 2 first of all we will see what will be the electric field this is positively charged, this is negatively charged. That if we take E1 and E2 be the electric field due to uh, due to plate charge on rather charge on plate 1 and 2 due to charge on plate 1 and 2. So if we are taking that it is having surface charge density sigma, so E1 will be given by sigma by 2 epsilon naught and magnitude of E2 will also be sigma by 2 epsilon naught. Now what we have to understand the direction here. This is on the left side and this is on the right side. See due to this charge present on first plate as electric field will be directed outward. This will be E1. Due to charge present on second plate, electric field is directed towards plate 2. So E1 and E2 but these are acting in opposite direction. Similarly, charge present on plate 1 is positive. So electric field at the right side will be directed outwards represented by E1. Similarly, electric field due to second uh, charge on plate 2 that will be E2. So, what you can say due to this net electric field on the left side of 1 or on the right side of 2. What it will be? This will be taken as E1 minus E2. As E1 is value sigma by 2 epsilon naught, E2 is having the same value because same charge density. But direction we have taken in terms of positive and negative charge, the result will be 0. And again, taking the point, there's a C here. As C, electric field due to first plate is sigma by 2 epsilon naught. Electric field due to second plate again is sigma by 2 epsilon naught. But on the left side of plate 1 and on the right side of plate 2, fields are acting in opposite direction due to the nature of charges and the magnitude of E1 and E2 are equal. So here at this reason you can uh, name this point as P or it can be Q. So at point P and Q or in these two reasons electric field will be 0. Electric field we have calculated to be 0. Now again see in between the plates. When we are taking in between the plates, electric field is starting from positive charge and ending at the negative charge. So electric field will be E. So due to first plate, it is directed away from first plate due to second plate, due to charge on second plate, it will be directed towards this. So it means in between 
the plates in the region between 1 and 2 what will be the electric field it will be e1 plus e2 why because field e1 and e2 are in the same direction you can see from the figure here here e1 and e2 both are in the same direction so both will be added now put the values this will come out to be sigma by 2 epsilon naught plus sigma by 2 epsilon naught and it will come out to be sigma by epsilon naught by taking its LCM. So electric field comes out to be sigma by epsilon naught. You can represent it by any symbol. It depends upon you. I have initially taken symbol E for electric field at point P and Q. So I have changed this. If you will take it E also here, it will not make any difference. Now, as electric field is given by this one this is sigma by epsilon naught i'm taking just the numerical value and charge density is charge per unit area charge density is charge per unit area so electric field is given by q upon a now as the plates have charge so potential difference between the plates what will be the potential difference between the plates as potential gradient relation we are familiar with v upon b equal to e so now v will be equal to e into v here we will take it as e dash because net field in between is represented by e dash substitute the value of e from here will you get q upon a epsilon naught d so now, what we are doing here, we are studying here parallel plate capacitor and we have to calculate the value of capacitance. So, capacitance is given by Q upon V. From this relation, when we are taking Q upon V, so what you will get by cross multiplying? A epsilon naught upon D. So, C comes out to be a epsilon naught upon D, where A is the area of each plate, epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, that is uh, whatever medium we are taking, as we have taken here, air medium, so that's why permittivity of free space, and D is the separation distance. So you have to learn this result, this is very important, will be used many a times in different numericals. Now, here capacitance of parallel plate capacitor depend upon area of the plates. Why? Because C is directly proportional to area. It is inversely proportional to distance. So it depends also on the distance as well as permittivity of the medium. Here we have taken free space but it doesn't mean another medium cannot be taken. There can be some another medium in between. In practical capacitors, we are getting paper capacitor, mega capacitor, electrolyte capacitor, different types of capacitor we are using. Some dielectric medium is filled in between the plates of a capacitor. So, this is the concept of parallel plate capacitor. Sometimes this question, this is very uh, simple uh, derivation. And to find, uh, um, you, if you have to find the expression for capacitance, what will be the expression or derive an expression for capacitance of parallel plate capacitor. So what you have to take, you have to take two plates separated by certain distance and A is the area of each plate. And certain charge is present on each of the plate. We have represented here by charge densities. Now, being same charge, magnitude same, so electric field due to play a charge on both the plates will be equal. That means magnitude of electric field will be equal. As we are taking electric field outside the capacitor plate, that is in reason P and in reason Q. So, being field are equal and opposite in both the reasons and their numerical values are equal. So, electric field in between the plates will be 0. And in between the plates of capacitor, electric field is directed towards two plate, reason being field lines are always starting from positive charge outward and towards negative charge. So that's why E1 and E2 are directed towards plate 2. So net field will be 
E1 plus E2 and the electric field comes out to be sigma by epsilon naught. Just you can see here that we have not done anything new here. We have simply applied the concept of electric field which we have studied earlier. So now surface charge density it is Q upon A. Now to calculate potential difference between the plates you have applied potential gradient and applied the basic formula Q equal to CV from there you have calculated capacitance. So this is all for parallel plate capacitor. Now after parallel plate capacitor now we are introducing dielectric constant or relative permittivity. This is not new concept. You are familiar with this concept. We have introduced in the very first part of this unit that is where you were studying the concept of Coulomb's forces. Electrostatic force under Coulomb's law. Now here also we have to apply, we have to define this dielectric constant in terms of capacitance. So first of all it is defined as it is defined as the ratio of capacitance of capacitor with dielectric in between the plates to the capacitance of the same capacitor with vacuum or air between the plates. It means here this is parallel plate capacitor. In, if we can say and when the air medium is there let the capacitance is C0 when no other medium. Basically dielectric is nothing this is the insulating medium. So, when air is in between, we are representing the capacitance by C0. When some dielectric medium is introduced, so in that particular case, let the capacitance has been changed to Cm. So, now dielectric constant capital K, this is defined as the ratio of capacitance of a capacitor with dielectric medium in between the plates to the capacitance of the same capacitor with air or vacuum in between the plates. This is a formula. This is a new formula. Many a times you will use here in solving numerical and conceptuals. So here Cm, you can rather represent it by C also. It depends upon you. This is a symbol represent, a symbolic representation only. This will be K into C0. As Parallel plate capacitor we have in case of parallel plate capacitor we have introduced the formula for capacitance as A epsilon naught upon D. So here you can uh, arrange rearrange this K epsilon naught A upon D. This K epsilon naught you can replace it by epsilon permittivity of the medium. So basically this you have to remember this result or this result. So now we have three formula by which we can define dielectric constant. Did we recall all that? First was force of interaction between the charges when placed in air or vacuum to the force between the charges placed between when the medium is placed in between. When you are solving these two values you are getting permittivity of medium to permittivity of free space and in terms of capacitance it comes out to be C upon C naught or Cm upon C naught. So you have to learn this key rule. Three different ways by which dielectric constant can be defined. Some tricky questions can be asked by molding the statements. So all the formulas must be at your tips. Now after this parallel plate capacitor, we have another spherical capacitor and one more cylindrical capacitor. Directly I will discuss that these two topics are not in your syllabus. But you can see in NCRT exercise there are some numericals. This is a statement I have taken from NCRT exercise question. This is for the case of spherical capacitor. So that's why I have to explain this concept to you also. 
on the part of the cylindrical capacitor we will just its formula because in that formula some typical concept of log will be used so formula based numericals have been given in ncrt so let me start with the concept of spherical capacitor see first of all let me read the statement a spherical capacitor consists of two concentric spherical conductors held in position by suitable insulating spores show that capacitors of this spherical capacitor is given by this result where r1 and r2 are the radii of outer and inner sphere respectively this is a statement it will give you more clarity in numerical form also what is a statement as a spherical capacitor consists of two concentric spherical conductors now you have to find the capacitor so here a spherical capacitor consists of two concentric spherical conductor of inner and outer radii inner radii r2 and outer radii r1 as outer conductor is grounded so whatever charge will be present here it will be grounded so let if we are taking that plus q is a charge present on inner surface of the outer conductor by induction minus q charge will appear on the outer surface of the inner sphere so here what we will observe that electric field will be zero in what reasons and for what um, in what places and for what reasons you are saying electric field is zero where as the outer surface is grounded you will say that electric field is zero for r greater than r1 whereas due to electrostatic shielding r is or r less than r2 that means in the inner region electric field will be zero because the charge always reside on the outer surface not on the inner side so now what will happen electric field is zero at this point as well as at this point so in what reason in which reason electric field will be present in between these two reason because the electric field will be present from positive charge to negative charge so that means electric field will exist in between these two reasons outer and inner spheres now if we have to take it what we are doing here we have to find the capacitance so basically due to this charge present on inner and outer there exists some potential difference and potential difference will be due to this plus q charge it will be k q by r1 and charge on inner sphere is minus q so potential due to this will be minus k q by r2 so k q common this is 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 so k q r2 minus r1 upon r1 r2 so as c is equal to q upon v now the concept is quite simple so q upon v this will come out to be r1 r2 upon k r2 minus r1 now you can substitute the value of k here so that what has been asked in the statement the similar result will be there k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not so here it will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon not and r2 minus r1 so capacitance comes out to be 4 pi epsilon not r1 r2 upon r2 minus r1 you can check your statement this was the result that was passed so here in this spherical capacitor two conductors are placed concentric conductor shells we have taken whose outer side is grounded so that electric field or no charge will be present on the outer side so no field will be there and on the 
inner side of the inner sphere no electric field will be present because all the charge will reside on the outer surface so electric field outside and inside that will be zero so electric field only exist in between the two shells that will produce potential difference so potential difference will come out to be this one from this you have taken the values you have substituted the values and on further solving this all is a mathematical step the result is this one now after the cylindrical capacitor we will just learn the formula only the formula no derivation i will take for cylindrical capacitor a cylindrical capacitor is like this outer one let the inner plate or the cylinder that is also a conductor this is having radius a and outer radius that is b and the length of cylinder is l with these parameters the capacitance of this cylindrical capacitor comes out to be 2 pi epsilon not l upon log ln we have taken b upon a actually the topics are directly not in the syllabus but as per ncert exercise as the formula based numericals have been given so this is the formula which you have to learn so that is all for today today let me just recapitulate what we have done as we have introduced parallel plate capacitor we have learned its formula of parallel plate capacitor comes out to be a epsilon not upon d where a is the area of each plate and b is the separation distance epsilon not is the permittivity of free space when instead of air some dielectric medium is introduced in between the plates then in that particular case then the medium will be there so dielectric constant will be multiplied so capacitance will comes out to be k times c not cm was k times c not after that we have introduced spherical capacitor in the form of numerical and its formula comes out to be that was 4 pi epsilon not r1 r2 upon r2 minus r1 and cylindrical capacitor the result is c that is 2 pi epsilon not l upon log b upon so that is all for today Just practice these concepts and revise these concepts. Learn these concepts by writing practice because chapter is about to be completed within few lectures, and after that you have to completely revise all the conceptuals and numericals for test also. Thank you. Have a nice day.